Welcome to the League of Women Voters Meet the Candidates Forum, produced in collaboration with WTJX-TV, our partner for well over 20 years in bringing these programs to the voters of the Virgin Islands. My name is Dr. Gwen Marie Molinar, member of the League of Women Voters of the Virgin Islands, and I will serve as the moderator for today's forum. It is our goal that you, the voting public, will become better acquainted with the candidates for political office in the Virgin Islands and therefore be able to make informed choices at the polls in November. We are pleased to have as our guests today three independent candidates, Senator Tr Traganza A. Roach, Ms. Wilma Marsh Monsanto, and Mr. Albert F. Richardson. The candidates have been informed in advance of the format for today's program. Each will have one minute for an introductory statement and one minute for closing. Questions of major interest to the public will be presented by the moderator. No candidate has been provided with these questions in advance of the program. The first respondent will be rotated among the three candidates, and the, respond the first responder will have two minutes for a response to a question, with the other participants having one minute to either contribute or to challenge. Now for the introductory statements, starting with Mr. Richardson. Hi, greetings. My name is Albert Richardson, and I'm seeking a seat in the 32nd Legislature of the U.S. Virgin Islands. I must thank the League of Women Voters for giving us this opportunity to address the people. And also greetings to my fellow guests. I see I'm in good company. Just a little about myself. I consider myself a collage of the Caribbean, and that's because my grandmother, Sumanangula, as you, the name Richardson denotes. My dad is from St. Kitts. My mother is from Dominica. And I was born here. And then my grandfather is from Barbados. So of course, that's quite a few islands. So I got Caribbean blood running all through me. I also spent some time in the St. Croix, lived there for four years. So I also consider myself a true Virgin Islander, whatever that might be. Um, I've had a long career in banking and home financing. I've been educated at the UN University of the Virgin Islands with a degree in finance. And I'm also an entrepreneur at this time. I run and operate a small restaurant called Burger Max, which you guys might be familiar with. I think that my experience, education, and dedication has prepared me well to serve the people of the Virgin Islands. My aim is to work with my colleagues, whomever they may be, to provide clarity, purpose, and solutions to the issues facing our people of the Virgin Islands. Again, my name is Albert Richardson. I'm number 16 on your voting machine. Thank you. Ms. Monsanto? Good day. I am Wilma Marsh Monsanto, and I want to thank the League for having us here and WTGX for doing what their part in taping us. I have served in several aspects of government, and I found that one of the most interesting parts was the Election, being a member of the Board of Elections, I was overwhelmingly elected by the people to represent them as it pertains to the election in the Virgin Islands. And I'm really happy to say that I know, that I know, that I know that I made a big difference in bringing about changes concerning elections. One of the changes made was that there will be no symbol voting. Uh, we worked hard on getting the law enforced. Uh, we, um, Melchior Tadman law was in place, and all these years we were voting symbols which were totally confused the electorate. That has been changed. And there are so many other a aspects of operation of the election system that is now, and prayerfully so, will give the people of the Virgin Islands uh, an, an, an upright and honest opportunity to select the individuals that they want to represent them for the next two years in making the quality of life much more better for the people of the Virgin Islands. Thank you. Senator Roach. Greetings. My name is Tregenza Roach, uh, your independent voice in the legislature. I've been an incumbent in the legislature for, this will be two terms, and seeking re-election to the legislature as candidate number three on your ballot in November. Um, uh, I am a lawyer and a journalist by training, and I have taught at the university for many years in the areas of public education and in education law. My passion is for the young people of the territory in particular, and I have worked very hard to bring more scholarship opportunities for young people 
to support the uh, activities of our elder population and to promote uh, policies that will affect our environment in a positive way. I am happy to be here this morning uh, in, on the LEAD program and I am happy to participate as well with my fellow candidates for the legislature. Thank you for this opportunity. Well, thank you. Now that you've introduced yourselves, let's begin our discussion. And the first question for our two challengers, our two aspirants, and you'll each have two minutes, you'll have each two minutes to answer, to respond to this question. As a challenger to the incumbents for a seat in the VI legislature, it's clear that you must believe that you could do a better job than what is currently being done by our current senator since you want to replace them. So could you answer the following? Why do you think we need a change from what we currently have? And what do you think you could do better than what is being currently done? Uh, Mr. Richardson, we begin with you. I think that the senators do a decent job. However, in everything in life, there is room for improvement. There are people with new ideas, new focuses, broader horizons. And I think my experience out here in St. Thomas, being an entrepreneur, being in banking for so long, can only add to what is there. And whomever I work with, my colleagues, I'd be more than happy to support them and, and work along with them to get laws passed. My focus is on the youths. And in vocational school, technical institution, and also for our elderly. I think that we should pay a little more attention to them. Not that they're not getting some attention, but a little more attention. Just a small example. My son traveled with some baseball teams, and we had to come out of our pocket to pay for his travels. Small things like that I would like to see tightened up some more. Um, our elderly, we know that right now there's a lot of things in the cri a crisis for them. I'd like to see that tightened up some more. So there's room for improvement, and I think that coming with fresh ideas can complement the ideas that are there and improve on them. Thank you. Ms. Monsanto? I tend to uh, disagree that the senators, as they are stand right now, um, have been very effective in any form or fashion in doing what should be done. For instance, I, I, I think that there are so many areas of concern, I don't know where to begin, but for instance, we have uh, cases that are, are being uh, taken years when it comes to probate matters, taxation, um, nothing has been done to ease the pain of the, of the taxpayers, particularly on the island of St. John. Uh, when you have, a, you have a case in court having to wait 15 years for the case to come forth. The, 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 there are a lot of things that, uh, that, that we must, we don't forget that we are a law-making body. Law-making, and we should put emphasis on looking at where the weaknesses are, and there are quite a few, we, and create laws to bring forth, you know, it, speedy trials and, and speedy action, thus improving the lifestyle for the people of the Virgin Islands. Ms. Monsanto, do you think that the legislature has anything to do with pr the probate courts? The legislature is a law-making body. Yes. The, 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 and it, of course they do. Of course they would. Probate isn't just for, for the Supreme Court. If probate, probate comes under the, the, the superior uh, jurisdiction, and there are times that, and, and to be honest with you, it's very problematic. It's very problematic that the probate sits in the court for, for many, many years. Yeah, that's, that's the judicial system. This is the legislative that's system the, that the, we're talking about. You create about. laws for the govern the judicial system too, don't yeah. you? Let me move okay. to uh, Senator Roach. <laughs> what major accomplishments have you made over the past two years on behalf of the people that you believe would justify your reelection? Well, I think I would begin uh, specifically in the area of education. And I have uh, succeeded in getting an amendment to the Hotel Development Act, which will provide $200,000 uh, in scholarships for students who pursue related studies with every new hotel development. Just recently, I also got an amendment to the Scholarship Act that deals with uh, 
the awarding of scholarships to students at the valedictorian and salutatorian levels. And what I was successful in doing is extending that to students who finish in the adult education program, uh, the adult education programs as well. And I think those are very important and significant measures in providing scholarship opportunities to those groups. I have also proposed an amendment to the uh, Economic Development Act, which will require each company to provide at least the equivalent of attendance at the university for a student for a year. Uh, that would increase it to double what the, max, what the contribution is at, at present. With regard to tax relief, I have also proposed a, which I believe is going to pass the legislature, the creation of a federal land impact uh, tax credit. And I came up with that idea particularly because of the impact of the large ownership, the ownership of large quantities of land on the island of St. John by the federal government, which is 60%. And the federal tax, tax impacts credit would provide a tax credit on the homestead in the percentage of land owned by the federal government on a particular island. Um, I had a very, very important bill that was recently signed into law by the governor as well. And that is a, a, a bill that is going to impact weapons coming into the territory. It, it, it provides what I believe is the cornerstone of tracking weapons that come into the territory by legal means. I think a lot of people don't understand we're going to have a little bit more time to, to talk about uh, we're going to have a little bit more time to talk about gun and gun uh, control and you can bring that up at that time. Well, let's conclude our discussion about uh, the role of a senator by asking a uh, first responder Ms. Monsanto. Uh, this question. As a senator, you're going to have to move beyond ca just caring about problems, but coming up with solutions and developing strategies. So the question then, and you as, a refer as the responder to this, what are the solutions? How are you going to arrive at your solutions? And what strategies will you be using to arrive at the solutions for addressing these problems? To me, the most important aspect of coming up with solutions would have to be the meeting of the minds. We would have to work as a team. We have to forget who is Democrat, Republican, ICM, or whatever, and we need to pool our efforts, sit down at the table. If, 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 if someone proposes a piece of legislation, let us work on it together so that we can you, you, you work. That's the only way to make progress. We have to work as a team. It cannot be me, myself, and I. I have proposed this. There are so many uh, legislations that have been proposed that are still sitting in the drawers that, that people are saying, I propose this, I propose that. But nothing has happened, as, as, as you, I'm sure you know. So therefore, one, the main thing has to be the working together. As, uh, in, in, you know, it, it can't be that I'm, I want to go my way. I want to be the one to say that I did this or I did that. We have to work as a team. If you don't have team and ship, you're not going to have proper leadership. You're not going to accomplish the goals we should, which would be creating of laws to protect the people of the Virgin Islands. Good. Thank you, Senator Roach. What, how do you arrive at solutions to the problems? Well, I'm a lawyer by training, having been a member of the Virgin Islands Bar since 1991. And so my first uh, approach is always to be prepared, to be as complete as possible in analyzing the problem that's before, the problem before us, uh, any data that impacts on it. And after that preparation, there's a great, great need for collaborative approaches. And being the only independent senator from the St. Thomas St. John District, in addition to what I already knew about collaboration and working together, I've had to be even uh, better at that. Uh, because there is nothing that you can do in the legislature without collaborative effort. And you have to be able to help people come to a place where you can have the exchange of ideas without rancor. The other important thing, and I know uh, Dr. Molina, you see it in com coming before the legislature, is that I pay particular attention to the people who are involved in the particular field. If they bring data to me, if they bring research to me that either supports or, or prevents me from sentence, looking yeah. at that opportunity, I take that into consideration as well. Great, Mr. Richardson? Well, any problem solving takes a few things. First, you must understand the issue 
before you. After understanding the issue, you might need to do research. And that's where a lot of answers are found. In fact, when you do research, you might find that this, the problem is not unique to the Virgin Islands, <laughs> but it may have been experienced in other territories. And that problem was dealt with by doing X, Y, Z. Why recreate the wheel if it was done somewhere else? Now, because the Virgin Islands is so unique, we may have to tweak some of these things. But you must understand the problem. You must do the research. And you must be able to bring that research and answers to the team, to the rest of your colleagues. You need to be able to sell them on that, on that, on that problem, on the solution for that problem. Let them see where you're coming from, what that research means, what the research shows, what the answers are. Get a buy-in, as, as some people like to say. And as long as you have that teamwork and people could see that you're honest and what you're saying is for the benefit of the Virgin Islands, it usually works. Take it to the people if need Thank be and you. let them see what your solutions are. Thank you. Well, Senator Roach, you were the one who brought up the, the topic of guns. And so let's go to the number one, well, at least close to number one, uh, concern of Virgin Islanders, and that, and that is crime. Do you think, Senator, that we need to have a change in our gun, gun control laws as a way of addressing the crime issue? Um, and if not, what are some of the other areas for addressing crime in the Virgin Islands? Well, I, I started talking about the gun registration bill, and I preface that by saying a lot of people think that the guns that are present in the ter territory, that they come here illegally. In fact, most, many of the weapons are bought legally in the United States. And if you go on a website and you look at traveling with weapons, if you go to the TSA website and you look at what the rules and regulations are that apply, they're very straightforward. You purchase the weapon, you put it in your luggage in a lockbox, and you bring it to the territory. I think when it, the problem was that when it arrived, you had to go physically to the police department to register it. So that has been changed to increase the police presence at the port and to require the registration directly at the port when you enter. And if you fail to do that, you would have committed a felony by leaving the port without doing so. I think that we also have to look at now how do we screen luggage coming into the territory. And I believe employing uh, elements such as the canine dogs um, at the airports in the baggage handling areas would be good to do that as well. I think in addition to that, we have to look at our relationship with the federal government and the openness of our borders with regard to the weapons that do come in illegally by sea. And we have to look at that, that, uh, that uh, area as well. We also have to look at whether there are weapons that when they are brought in, we need to uh, provide legislation discriminating against particular types of weapons that can be seized at that point that are not allowed in the territory. And, and I think another very important part of the crime situation, and I speak about it sometimes, is that we have to stop focusing on the behavior of others. We have to look at ourselves and ask ourselves as residents and Virgin Islanders, what do we do to create a climate in which crime is possible? And that runs from running the stoplight to speaking on your cell phone as you're driving, to not uh, observing pedestrians crossing in the crosswalks. All of those things we have to do as well to promote a climate of law uh, compliance. Thank you. Mr. Richardson, are there other things we can do besides gun control? To assist with gun controls, of course, I agree with the Senator and the last legislation passed to um, monitor the guns coming into the territory because as he did say, most of the guns coming in here are coming in legally and then they end up in the hands of people on the street. One thing I would like to see added, and my colleagues could look at something like that, is these people that we get caught with the guns, the question is, where did you get it from? You could, could you imagine if we ask them or tell them or put in place that, listen, if you don't tell us where you got this gun from, you would do an extra five years, extra 10 years, wouldn't that be a deterrent to them moving with guns? Would we also be a deterrent to the person selling the guns, knowing that they can be ratted out as to where they got the guns? Because most people are self for self-preservation might just say where they get it from. Just, so that's just something to look at. However, the problem about with guns, we must admit, is not just how they get in and who gets them. It's much deeper than that. It's a community issue, isn't it? The community has to stand below, besides our police department. If you see something, say something. Mothers see the children coming back and forth with, with assets. Thank they you. need to I know where, those, you're, where you're, those are coming from. Your, your time is up. We Thank you. now move to Ms. Monsanto. 
we 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 are talking about uh, guns coming in, coming in, but we really need to pay attention to the many young people that are slaughtering each other every day. Uh, what's ha happening in our community with the young people? Okay, then I think we need to be a little more humane. Uh, but the thing about it is that the young people don't want to come forth because they figure that they would be uh, are challenged or they would be, uh, you know, treated not fairly. If they, you know, you say about seeing things and speaking it, and and it, it, we have gotten to the point where we can't even trust making a phone call that that someone is house is being broken into. Because when the response is made, you'd be surprised how that response and by whom that response is made and how long it takes for that response. So we really have to see if we could corral the young people and find employment for them, expunge the records. Some of these young people have records that, and, and they know it's being held against them. What can we do to help? How can we work with other organizations that would come with a protective attitude we're not going to criminalize you. We're not going to lock you up. But we want to help you so that you don't be a victim of even gun violence. Okay, thank you. And we will. Let's now turn our attention to economic development and the financial status of the Virgin Islands because we could, we could spend the, really the, the rest of the program talking about crime. But there are some other issues that I wanted to bring up. And so we're going to uh, begin with Mr. Richardson for to be the first responder of this question, and then the others will, can respond to it. And the question is this. We have all heard the financial experts say that the Virgin Islands must grow its economy in order to raise itself from its current financial crisis. So I will ask you and the, the incumbents, what do you plan to do? Because this is an, an issue that you're going to have to, to address. What do you plan to do as new senators to improve and grow the economy of the Virgin Islands. Mr. Richardson? My take on this is that every dollar, every job in the Virgin Islands has a multiplier effect. So my focus is bringing as much investment into the United States Virgin Islands, bringing as much jobs to the United States and Virgin how you, Islands. And how are you going to do and that? And how we do that, we have a beautiful program in place right now. It's called the EDC program. It has been proven to bring in millions of dollars into the US, United States Virgin Islands. It may have tapered off a bit, but I'm, think, I'm thinking we can refocus some attention to that, bring in some more dollars. People, it's been stated in the last report that they have paid over $1.5 million, billion dollars, I'm sorry, in salaries only. That, those salary dollars is what sustain our society. They've spent billions of dollars in buying buildings, fixing them up in capital projects. So let's bring those in. There are other programs out there. I mentioned once before a program that I, I, I researched called the EB-5 program. It's where investors come to our shores and they must put up between 500 to a million dollars to invest in a business. In exchange for in that investment, they must hire locals. They must remain in business for at least two years. And in exchange for that, they offered US citizenship. And I'm not just pulling this out of the air. This has been done and is being done in the United States of America successfully. Like everything else, it had its challenges, but as time goes by, it has, they have ironed out most of that. Why don't we look into something like that? We must bring in sustainable income into the Virgin Islands. Well, of the, course, in the Virgin Islands, we cannot offer citizenship uh, to... We, we, well, the, it, it's, okay. it, it can be done based on the research that I, that, 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 that I looked at, and it's something that we'll have to dig a little deeper into to get some of the answers. There's also, we've spoken about sports tourism for quite a while. St. Croix is prime, ready and ripe for something like that. And I know that there's money allocated for it. There's money sitting around for it. Why don't we move on something like that? Could you imagine the jobs that would create just to build the capital project? Immediately that money moves into the Virgin Islands. It moves around. The multiply effect gets in. Then imagine people coming to the Virgin Islands to use those facilities. As, as the cliche says, build it and they will come. Let's do that. Let's push hard to bring in more investment into the community, more investment into the, into the Virgin Islands. And that's a sure way to get money here, get jobs here, and everyone benefits from that. Ms. Masanta, would you like to contribute to that? Yes. We, 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 we look at um, uh, the need for, to build our economy. Nevertheless, all of our prime 
uh, Mr. Richardson just mentioned, uh, we can do build this and we can build that, yes, but too many things are outsourced from the Virgin Islands. Too, I pick up and I dial 913, I get somebody in India, Timbuktu, to tell me what the local number is and things like that. We, we, outsource, we outsource the billing, uh, we, we have the, up in the tax assessor's office, we have the, 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 the institution there that, oh, again, these, the, the, and the monies are not staying in the Virgin Islands. We have a lot of people that are working, that, and, and, and you look at the lines in some of these, uh, air, uh, what do you call them, American mortgage or American, uh, What's the name of the um, Western institution? Union. Western Union. You go into the Western Union division, and the lines are tr tr long because the monies are not staying. Money is circulating, but monies are not staying here. So, you, so for whom are we building the economy? Is it so that, uh, that uh, the monies are, are outsourced or, or this, it's sent out? People have to support the families, yes, but that has to be because the taxes are not being, no taxes are being collected from the individuals. We have to find some way of targeting Western Union to get some, some sort of fund. Okay, thank uh, you for that, for that response. And Senator, uh, would you care to address that issue? Uh, well, I wanted to add to the economic uh, ideas. I think yeah. the, the piece that I would like to see focuses on the restoration and rebuilding of our historic towns. If you look at the towns of Christianstead, Frederickstead, Charlotte Amalia, uh, compare them, uh, Dr. Molina, to 30 years ago or 40 years ago, there's a great, deal for, great need for investment in the towns. And one of the things that I've proposed is to look at how we use the internal revenue matching funds that we get from the tax uh, rebates and to think about creating a small business uh, fund to support uh, entrepreneurs, and there's a set aside for young entrepreneurs who develop businesses, establish or expand businesses within the historic towns. I think a, a key part of our economic development lies in the restoration of the heart of, of these islands, which are the historic towns. I also believe that there is unlimited potential in agriculture. Uh, throughout the world now, so many persons are concerned with the quality of food that they're consuming. And we have an opportunity to uh, capture a niche in the uh, organic farming and uh, a measure that I have that is directed at uh, using some of the well, agricultural Maybe we can discuss that in the, in, in the, following, in the following question. And the, the, this question now goes to Ms. Monsanto. Uh, Senator Roach mentioned agriculture, and I know that uh, there has been a push by some of the farmers to obtain 1% of the general budget to support agricultural program. Uh, the question that we would ask then is, how would you as a senator address this request when there are, we hardly have enough money to fund some of the things that we are required to fund, education, health? How would you respond to that, Ms. Monsanto? I think we need a, a, a complete overhaul uh, as to what progress the agriculture department has made in, in expanding its programs. Um, to come to market and say you're giving out this and giving out that to the senior citizens or to whatever is not sufficient because we, we, we're trying to work it up to the point that the schools could be supplied in its entirety perhaps with fresh fruits and vegetables. St. Croix has a vast um, fertile land holding and uh, it, 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 we, we need to come up, like you said, with the funding for this. And one of the things we would have to look into is what federal grants can we get? I, I'm concerned about federal programs. We need a federal programs office just by itself here in the Virgin Islands uh, where anyone who is requesting a grant or re uh, make requests for a grant, that it passes through that office. Because there are a lot of grants that come about that nobody knows, and I'm, I'm from experience, nobody knows where these monies are going. You give a, a small expose as to what you would do with the monies. But when the monies come in, nobody, there's no accounting as to how these monies were spent, what, what monies you have on hand. We, we need some honesty and transparency in what we are dealing with. We talk about money, money, but we are not being very transparent, very honest in how we are looking at 
at, at the money situation. And by the way, the legislature is the one who controls and holds the purse strings. And they have not been doing a good job as far as I'm concerned when it comes to, I see you as sat the other day and listened, uh, we come up with $179 million for education. And you just, just because somebody asks you for, you know, for a certain amount of money, you just dole it out, dole it out without understanding, without knowing truly if you have these monies available and there should be some sort of line item, line item budgeting. We can't do it otherwise. Okay, so you have, that's your approach, Senator? Uh, well, well, to you. speak directly on your question, uh, I believe that it's clear time that we see more science in agriculture. And I, I don't believe that the solution to every issue is money, because a lot of the times uh, when people come to the uh, legislature, it's a question, we don't have money to do this and we don't have money to do that. And I think it's time to have more extensive collaboration between agriculture and the university. Because I, I, when agriculture thrived, we didn't have a labor cost. That was in slavery. We, had, we have now the cost of labor, but we have to look at how the science address that, and I don't see enough collaboration between the university and agriculture. I do believe that uh, there is a great opportunity to also tap into federal funds that may be available from the National Science Foundation, et cetera, that can be brought to bear on how we utilize our limited land area to uh, have the greatest yield. Um, the question of uh, a uh, one percent of the budget is an important one. Right now, that would probably double what is available for agriculture. Okay, no, time time is up, but mm -hmm. I, I do want to correct one thing. You you mentioned the lack of cooperation between or, or activity between the university and uh, and the farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, you are not suggesting, I hope, that it's a, a failure on the part of the university. Oh no, but, no, no. Uh, okay. I'm just saying that there's more collaboration okay. that can take can place. Mr. Uh, Richardson. Richardson. Well, let's face it. Zero from zero is zero, correct? So if there's no money, there's no money. But why don't we look at a different approach? What I would do for the farmers, um, or what I would encourage, is of course to continue looking through the federal government because I know there's um, departments in the federal government that look after our farmers. So let's, let's look at the grants that's there. What about this? What about if we help the farmers market their goods? Let's put it in place that the major supermarkets here buy from our farmers. Farm to table is a big thing these days in the United States. People want fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. What if the government itself becomes a client of these farmers? All the foods that are provided in the, in the food program to the schools, why don't the government be the one buying from the farmers? Plus, can we give incentives to these huge supermarkets to buy locally? Listen, if you buy from our farmers, then you get an incentive of X, Y, Z. What that says is that we provided a market for our farmers. They could see that their hard work isn't in vain. They have some place to somebody and some place to sell their goods, and everybody benefits from it. We must admit, not much young people are going to farming right now. It's hard work, and sometimes they just don't want to Thank go that you. route. Thank that, that's, that's you. That's a very important point that people are not taking uh, into consideration. So let's, let's look now at the way we are spending these do taxpayer dollars uh, uh, in the government. And mm -hmm. Senator Roach, uh, I'm going to pose this question to you. In the past year, there was a major public outcry regarding the unmonitored and reckless use of public credit cards. What has the legislature done to address this matter? I believe it was, it was or originally um, brought up by Senator Liebert, uh, and, and Senator uh, Blyden, but has the legislature done anything at all about? I I, I don't, but I don't believe that it's just necessarily the legislature. I think in the instances where there is any fraudulent use of government credit, uh, credit cards or government funds in general, uh, then that becomes a criminal matter. And sometimes in the community, that avenue is not paid enough attention to. So I who, have who, heard should, who should come up with the rules and regulations for the use of public dollars uh, in, the, in the use of credit cards? Well, I... I, I believe that each agency, each agency head, um, I know in the legislature there is one card that I'm aware of, um, and that is through the Office of the Executive Director, and there are very stringent rules as to how that is, uh, that is done. Um, I believe that it's incumbent on the uh, in executive branch of the government as well to come up with policies and regulations 
uh, regarding that. I believe if we look at the statutes, they, one of the things that I always do before I propose new legislation is to look at statutes that are present that address the particular situation. And I believe that if there are instances of violation of uses of uh, government property, or government resources, then the appropriate agency, the, we have had extensive audits done by the um, uh, Inspector General's office, uh, reviewing contracts, reviewing how monies have been used, how, how they've been allocated, and criminal charges need to be brought in the instances where there are those violations. Okay, Ms. Um, Mr. Richardson, do you want to address that? Oh, of course. Um, I had a career in banking, so my banking career and also being a finance manager at one of the local institutions have taught me that there must be checks and balances. I don't think it's a senator's role to tell people how to balance their checkbooks, how to look at every credit card spending. Each department should be responsible for that. They should have checks and balances in place. If you spend something on your credit card, please show me the receipts. In fact, before you spend it, should it be approved? Shouldn't the reason why, you, why you're using it fall within certain guidelines. If that is so, is so and the accounting department, the finance department in that department is really tight, nothing gets spent without proper authorization, proper proof of what the expenditures was, and also the, how legit the spend, expenditure was. If it wasn't legit, then there's two things you do. One, you'd have paid back, but it should have been approved before you spent it. But if it wasn't, it wasn't approved, if it wasn't legit or used for proper cause, then you need to pay it back. And for those who want to abuse the system, there is the judicial system that comes Thank in place you. to take care of what they need to. Ms. Monsanto. Yes, I'm glad you asked that question because being on the board of election, it, it's, it's unbelievable what happens with the people's money. And now, and, and, and you have a situation where an individual was granted $5,000 in a cash advance to, to take a trip. When we went through the record, page by page, we found that only $300 of those monies were spent and mm -hmm. there was no return of the, the, the remaining money. So we talk about the Inspector General fi findings. The Inspector General has no power, no authority to pursue these matters further. We need to create le legislation that would give the Inspector General some sort of authority to even bring it to the attention of whomever should, it should be brought, but to pursue it into the courts. We need to allow him further um, um, uh, st strengthening of his position because just to find errors and report them, he, I'm sure he's not a happy man. You, because <laughs> nothing happens in the, these Virgin Islands. It's too much of an abuse of the people's money in every aspect. Thank you. And let's talk about abuse of the environment by talking about waste management. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Richardson, you're going to answer this first question about waste, manage, waste management. The EPA has threatened to file almost $3 million in fines against the Waste Management Authority for failure to comply with a consent decree. I think they came to some um, agreement very recently regarding the Bovoni landfill on St. Thomas and the Aguila landfill on St. Croix. What specifically can the legislature do? What do you see yourself as a senator were you to get in? What could you do to ensure that waste management complies with the recommendations of the EPA and avoid having to pay these costly fines that the Virgin Islands can ill afford to, to pay? Well, extending the land mass of the dump definitely isn't the answer as they did. I think they bought some additional land which gave them six months more. That definitely isn't the answer. The answer is to close the dump. But how can we close the dump? I know for sure that there's at least two proposals made to the waste management, which is called waste to energy proposals. One has been vetted through the PSC. The Georgetown Group has looked at it and is sitting on waste management desk. What these people propose to do is to convert waste to energy. Convert waste to energy means using the waste. That means getting rid of it piece by piece, closing the dump. And the good thing about this is that that energy is then tapped right into the grid of WAPA, which provides cheaper energy to WAPA, which should benefit and trickle down to us, the people. So the solution is not to buy more land, but to put things in place that have worked elsewhere, can work, and, is on, and right now people have, contract, have contracts in place willing to do that. I would love to see those contracts in place where they come in, take the waste, transfer it to energy, and eventually all the dumps, the dumps will be closed and, and, and consolidated. 
You can imagine your that time, it's your time, your time is up. Uh, and, but uh, well, let me ask Ms. Monsanto a, a question about waste management. Are you in favor of, of the tipping fees? Waste management is saying part of its problem is that it just doesn't have the funds. And we know that, pe that the workers walked off of the Anguilla landfill and, um, on, on St. Croix. So uh, are you in favor of the tipping fees that waste management has come up with as a way of addressing their finances? I am not in favor of the tipping fees because I don't think waste management has done anything to improve and, 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 and make comfortable the, the residents as to what services they're going to truly render in honesty and integrity. I, the steps that I would take to preserve and protect the territory's environment for the health and safety of the residents would be to reconsider once more the installation of a recycling plant. We have spent thousands, people went to Denmark in droves, senators that is, Individuals from, 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 from the environmental, health, environmental department went to, uh, to Denmark, thousands of dollars on jaunts to look at the, the, the recycling plants that they have in place that you can use the residue from the, 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 the uh, plant for fertilization, to fertilize the soil. You, all of that can be done. They can separate. We spent millions, like I said. Are we preparing to spend millions again? And now we've been sued. Or you said millions too. Yeah. So, you know, what 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 have the senators done other than take jaunts, come back to the to the Virgin Islands, you know? And what what nothing happens. We have to stop it. I alone can't stop it. That's why I said we have to have senators in place. Who, who are going to take the people's interests at heart. Open that legislature to the public, have hearings where people can come in. Share, they can, a lot of people have good ideas. A lot of people may want to help to invest, to correct. There are millionaires around who would say, well, we perhaps want to do this for the territory, but they're not being heard. The, the doors are closed to the general public. If you don't have on a suit like Senator Roaches, you can't get in. You know, I'm just being, um, I'm just, I'm just, you know. But um, we need to open the halls and hear from the public. We need to hear from the leaders. Okay, Mr. Senator Roach. Well, well how do you uh, so, respond to those? No, I have to say that yeah. I have neither been to Denmark nor Cuba <laughs> well, say, at the I government you were, expense. But Senator so I know Ms. Uh, Monsanto could be very flamboyant with that, number one. But, and number two, I do believe that we have public hearings that anybody is welcome, and you don't have to be in a suit to come to the legislature. But I do believe that one of the problems that we have with waste management here is we really haven't looked at what is a great value of the waste that's generated. Other places do that. And I think it's very, very important. One of the initiatives that I proposed was a biodiesel initiative that takes simply waste oil that is generated by our restaurants, by our university and its cafeteria, et cetera, et cetera, which can be converted to uh, biodiesel fuel. And we even had uh, experts from the University of the West Indies come here in workshops, ha hold workshops about this very particular thing and show how easily it can be done. I think the idea of recycling, which is, uh, has been before the legislature and is now together with the plastic ban that is being proposed, uh, and uh, candidate Richardson observed the point about waste to energy. And we have a waste energy plant at the uh, landfill at present. One of the issues they had there was a, a subterranean fire, which I understand, you know, has been has been addressed. I think that's that's that that's the end of that uh, end of that question. And um, what I want to do now, because there are so many areas that we could have discussed, and and I, I was so I enjoyed our discussion here today. What I'd like to do then, so we could cover as many topics as possible, is to give each one of you uh, two minutes to talk about a topic that we have not had an opportunity to discuss here today that is something that you would want to work on were you to be elected or re-elected uh, to the 32nd uh, legislature and that you, that you feel indeed passionately about. And we begin with Ms. Monsanto on that. Well, we one of the things that I would like to see take place is oversight of mm -hmm. some sort of oversight by the senators, by the Senate, having to do with executive orders. Now, we all know that executive orders are 
prepared and, and, and administered by the, the executive branch of government. And what is happening, we don't even know how many executive orders are sitting right now that perhaps are being administered within the, the government itself. We just don't know because executive orders, are, like I said, are done by the executive branch. And when you look at the executive order having to do with same-sex marriage, I am amazed that um, there was no consultation, there was nothing, just the governor himself came back one day and he said, executive order, same-sex marriage would bring monies into our territory, so we are going to be granting this thing. And, um, and I, I think that th these are areas that, that really uh, concern the people as a, of, uh, as a whole, and here is where I, I personally would want to see some legislation governing the, over, governing the working together. The governor can prepare and, sub, and submit or do what he has to do, and, but he should not retain the power all by himself. He should not, because the Senate represents the people of the Virgin Islands. He does too, but it's not a one-man show. And we need to work the executive and the senatorial, the judicial branches of government. We need to be a working team if we are going to make progress in this place. Yes, okay, I, I, I understand your concern about that with respect to uh, same-sex marriage. It is not uh, 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 an executive order in the Virgin Islands, as you know, it's a national, it's a national thing. It's an executive order. He put it in place when he did come back. If you don't, if you yeah, don't know but that, but it, it is an it is a national thing. You have no, we have no control over that, Senator Roach. What's your burning issue? Well, I I think that one of the issues that we really need to pay attention to in the Virgin Islands is climate change. Mm -hmm. I think that is going to be an issue for the entire planet. And because we rely so much on our environment for our economic product, and be a large part of it, which is uh, tourism, we need to really be serious about how it's going to impact, for instance, vulnerable areas like our coastlines, and issues as to include water, water safety, water control, water availability. And one of the bills that I've proposed and I've been working with the Green Technology Center at the university is to provide a comprehensive approach to looking at how we're going to deal with particular areas of our economy, tourism, agriculture, et cetera, with regard to the impacts of the impending climate change. That's one. And two, I think we have to look uh, to how we diversify our tourism product. And I think we need to pay particular attention to that because of the increasing competition uh, that is taking place in our region. And we have to look at new elements of that product. And one of the things that I want to do is to look at how our neighboring island, Hassel Island, which holds so much of the keys to understanding the maritime history of the Virgin Islands, how that can be accessed more readily as an expansion of our tourism product and as an extension of our educational products where our children can learn more about this territory. And right now I've been discussing with Basil Otley how we might undertake a feasibility study of a very futuristic idea which is connecting uh, Hassel Island and St. Thomas mm. by, by a bridge, by a pedestrian bridge where you can simply walk across and explore the wonderful historic ruins, the pieces of the history of the Virgin Islands that are not as uh, reachable and tangible as Thank they you. should be. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you brought up environmental uh, climate control because I don't think in the Virgin Islands we're paying much attention to that and it has serious impacts for us. Mr. Richardson, what's your burning issue? My burning issue is something that's very acute and very near to home. It's GRS. Mm -hmm. Right now our seniors are facing a serious challenge where GRS is proposing to cut their annuities by 30%. Tough times call for tough decisions and critical times need critical measures. Right now we need to look after our seniors. There's different ways to do it. There are different funds we have out here. There's the insurance guarantee fund, there's the community facilities fund. Each of them get money, one from the insurance premium and the other one from GRG respectively. Those are capped at 25 million, 50 million, whatever the cap is. What about when we reach, the, reach that cap, the excess, what do we do with it? Usually that's diverted to different places in the government. But GRS is at a place now that I would ask our colleagues and ask anybody to f side with me on taking care of our seniors. When these funds reach the cap, take that money from there, put it where it, where it makes the most difference for our seniors. I cannot see the people that have lived here, have worked hard in the government, just trusted aside 
and thrown away and given even less than what they need to survive on. So I'd like to see that what happened. And next big burning issue that I have and I'd like to work with my colleagues is insurance. There are over 30,000 people in the Virgin Islands. I'm an entrepreneur. It costs me almost more than $400 to insure myself. What if there's a way we could encourage companies, private companies to come here, whether it be hedge funds or whatever, to come here, work with the small businesses and provide insurance for our local people. Not the government, that's a whole different thing, but for our small businesses. I am willing to pay something for my employee to keep them, to make them more whole, to give them insurance. What that does, the $50 million on uncompensated funds at the hospital, care, sorry, at the hospital, that, bridge, that, br that gap is now bridged. Therefore, insurance for most of our people, for just, through small businesses, hospital gets money, they hire more people, more trauma surgeons, more equipment, more everything, they get to pay the WAPA bill mm -hmm. and other outstanding bills. That benefits all of us as a community. And Thank you. those are my two of my burning issues, including some others. Thank you. I'm sure we all have For others. Sure and I, I really wish we had two hours that we could spend and talk because you, you people are so full of good ideas. I wish I had time to ask you a question about the Constitution <laughs> and, and whether you feel we need a Constitution and, uh, or not. Uh, should it be considered a priority? Let me just go around the table very, very quickly. Do you think uh, having, a priority is a, is, is a pri having a Constitution is a priority for us? Or should, do we need to have status first? Just everybody 30 seconds. Mr. Richardson. I think we, we need to figure out our status, how we relate to the United States. So we need to do that first. Yeah, we need to figure out who, where we want to go, what we want to be first before okay. we decide what we use to govern Ms. Monsanto? Us. Yeah. As a member of the fifth constitution, uh, I agree that we should pursue that because it isn't dead. It's just asleep, but it's, it hasn't died. It can be reactivated. So, so you, I would as be a interested senator, in, you would be interested in reactivating in it, it, and we will deal with the few issues that, 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 that caused it to... One of the biggest issues was the matter of monies. You hand monies, uh, $250,000, and those monies were expended. After those monies were expended, it came to the point where you need to educate the public now. 30 seconds, the Senator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think we should pursue a constitution, and I don't think that we should be at all threatened or put off by the fact that we've done it a few times before mm -hmm. because it's an evolving process mm -hmm. and you Thank learn you. each time you do it. Good. And well, it's we've, an we've come to the end of today's Thank forum yeah. and each candidate will now have one minute to close beginning with Senator Roach. Uh, thank you. This has been a very enjoyable uh, discussion, and I will ask the voters to allow me to continue a good work that I have begun. I am number three on your ballot uh, when we vote in November, your independent voice in the legislature, and I will continue to uh, maintain my focus on the young people of the territory, ideas and issues that affect the elderly, and whatever I can do to promote and preserve uh, the wonderful environment that we enjoy as persons who live in this wonderful part of the world. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you for your support, and I look forward to serving you in the future. Trigenza Roach, candidate number three. Thank you. Ms. Monsanto? Yes. Uh, Wilma Marsh Monsanto, number 11, numero 11 on the ballot. Uh, I want to thank the uh, League and uh, WTJX for this is indeed a privilege to sit here and share with your listening audience, with the public, uh, our ideas, what we would like to do. And sitting and looking at us express ourselves in person uh, is, is, is I, I, I hope you will take us seriously in what we have said, weigh what we have said, and uh, give, I ask you to give me your support on November 8th. Now, I'm very uh, interested in honesty transparency and integrity in government, particularly by our elected officials. Thank I'm you. longing for that. Thank and I, another, the last thing is proper and legal assessment of properties in the Virgin Islands must take place. This, is, this has to Thank come you. with the outcome of fair taxation. We need fair taxation for the people of the Virgin Islands. Thank you. And Mr. Richardson? Yes, again, my name is Albert Richardson. This was more fun I thought, than I thought it would be. <laughs> I really did enjoy it. Um, and with my colleagues right here, or, or my, my fellow guests, I really enjoyed it. Again, my name is Albert Richardson. And um, my focus, of course, as I said, is um, on the youths, crime reduction program, giving our youths something to do. Um, it says idle hands find crazy things to do. 
paraphrasing a bit. So if we give our youth something to do, vocational school, vocational institutions, something to make them productive members of society, imagine the effect it would have on crime reduction. Imagine what the economy would do if young people start working, putting money back into the system. It would benefit, benefit all of us. Again, my name is Albert Richardson, and for dedication, clarity, and purpose, vote number 16, sweet 16, um, Albert Richardson <laughs> to the Senate. Thank you. On behalf of the League of Women Voters of the Virgin Islands, I'd like to thank our three candidates for being here on today's forum. And thank you, WTGX, and our viewing audience. Please continue to view all of our programs, which air Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 p.m. and will re-air on Saturdays at 4 and Sundays at 4 and 5 p.m. Be sure, voters, that you are registered to vote. Your vote does count. In the Virgin Islands, where our numbers are relatively small, one vote can make a big difference. Remember, your vote determines the kind of government we will have. And do consider to join the League of Women Voters, as Mr. Richardson said. We are a fun group. We are serious about the Virgin Islands, but we are open to both men and women. Be sure to visit our website at www.lwvvi.org. I'm Gwen Marie Molinar, and I do look forward to seeing you at the polls. Thank you.